Hi, I'm Scott Zellner, owner of King Motorsports here in New Berlin, Wisconsin. We've been the sole authorized Mugen distributor for North America since 1988. Mugen Company Limited was established in 1973 by Hirotoshi Honda, Mr. Honda's son. Essentially, it's the Alpina or AMG of the Honda world. They do a lot of engineering work with Honda. They're kind of the inside line to most Honda racing activities worldwide. So what differentiates Mugen from the rest of the aftermarket world is, is Mugen is essentially a race company. They've had, through the years, uh, involvement in the highest level of all motorsports from Formula One, Super GT, Super Formula, SCCA racing, uh, even uh, sports car racing in, in Europe and everywhere across the world. Those engineers that develop those parts are also working hand in hand with the, the street engineers developing parts that are much more robust and work uh, at a much higher level than your standard aftermarket company that doesn't have that broad based knowledge of uh, what it takes to survive in the racing environments. The car behind me is the Mugen King Motorsports Civic Type R prototype. As you can see, it looks vastly different than the standard Civic Type R. Many of the parts that were, you see on this car, the aero parts, the rear wing, were all designed on a car called the RC20 GT, which was their test bed that Mugen used to test both on the track and on the street all the parts that they developed for this car. So many of the parts that they did, such as the rear wing, and then verified in a full-scale wind tunnel. And again, that's something that Mugen has access to that many aftermarket companies don't. All right, let's take a look at what they did on the interior here. First thing, the steering wheel. You have carbon top and bottom. Your grip is now leather and it is much meatier. The thing compared to the regular Type R wheel is they've ditched the Alcantara, which means you're not gonna have to deal with cleaning it or your hands sweating as much. The other part are these seats. These buckets that are in here, again, this is something for somebody that has a very specific need to go to the track or you just want the look of it. The Recaros are amazing. The way that they are covered, the removable, removable leg bolsters are great. They are supremely comfortable in the limited fashion that you're gonna be using this. There is no lateral movement in the seat and with the factory belt, it's pretty good. The negative here is, well, you have to be somebody that is a very petite body type. If you've had about 10 kids or you're not doing soy injections in your body like I am, you are not gonna fit. And I've had one gentleman, Mike, who got in here, he was six foot two and he's like, yeah, that ain't happening. And pretty much anybody that is over like 180 pounds might have a difficult time fitting in here. Now, the rest of the interior is just little stuff, like the shifter kit. It gives you a bit more positive engagement, but it's still a good mix of plastics and metal in there that's gonna last the life of this car. And Honda offered this back in the Honda Fit days of the previous generation around 2010. And most people that had that installed from the dealership still are using it 10, 15 years later. So you know this is gonna last. Again, it's subtle improvements. Same thing with the shift knob. You have a leather wrap knob. You have the trunk mat and the side sills that you could add to this to give it a little bit more flair. But most of the rest of this car has to do with the exterior and some of the mechanical stuff. So we're gonna head in the shop and talk about that. We heard from Scott at King Motorsports. We know what they're trying to do as a brand. Yes. And Mugen is trying to do as an aftermarket supplier that has strong connections with Honda. They're creating a product that is high quality, that looks like it was made to be put on the car from the factory. And so, I win hot in port nights every night in this car. I, it is a very extreme looking vehicle. And if you value that, and you value that approach, which is very uniquely Japanese, this car is gonna get you a lot of street cred. And from a manufacturing perspective, jokes aside, the value in Mugen is the fact that they work closely from, with Honda. So a lot of the manufacturing processes, the plastics they use, the way things are assembled are very, very similar to stock. And the fact that the engineering teams work together frequently and have worked together in the past is also huge. So let's go over the exterior first. This, again, this is a polarizing car to begin with, the, the regular Civic Type R. This is taking it to another level, and we're not going to talk about 
what this looks like. All the things that are on here can be piecemeal. This is not like, oh, I gotta buy all this crap. So when we look at the front, you have a lower lip, you have garnishes that go over the fake vent work. And one of the things they wanted to do is try to hide a lot of the black plastic that's all over this. So you'll notice as a theme, the side skirts get rid of the black. The lower spoiler gets rid of the black. The fake vent work has a white piece over it. And then the upper grill has a nice carbon fiber garnish over it. Now this car does not have the CFRP or dry carbon hood. It didn't get here in time, but we're gonna show you pictures. And this is a, an extremely high quality piece that shaves off about 10 pounds from the factory hood. And there is open vent work. So one of the biggest issues with the 10th gen type R is heat. It has a lot of problems managing heat. So again, this is not a race car, but if you're taking to the track, that hood offers a lot of help or overhead to get rid of a lot of that, that heat that's building up in the engine bay. And it also reduces pressure, which decreases front end lift. And then when you combine the rear wing, which as you mentioned is adjustable. Yeah, so you can change the angle of attack in both the front and rear were designed with CFDs in mind. They did not give us specific data, but Mugen in the past has famously built race cars and help with their racing team in Japan and some of the factory race cars. So I have to imagine these parts are genuinely functional. What, what they said more in the explanation was it's more aero-stable. I, I, you know, again, downforce and lift and all that, we can't really quantify that. But again, it's supposed to be working together. A lot of these parts work together. The other parts of the exterior are just, obviously, you got a decal package. Yeah, and delivery. You know, delivery. You have these wheels that, again, these were pre-production. The wheels, MD CF 20s, and they're 20 inch wheels. They are forged. Uh, again, these are prototypes, so they're not going to match up to what the production are. In total, they save nine pounds a corner, which is pretty substantial to be honest. And then because this is a 19 and not a 20, this is prior to the brake updates on this car. So they have endless rotors which supposedly also save weight. However, that is kind of negated by the two-piece Brembo rotor that you get in the newer yeah, car. Yeah, if you have the newer car, it kind of makes this irrelevant. Uh, they are slotted, so there's gonna be some pad scrubbing that's there. But the big thing that King is releasing at the end of this year, 2021, is the MF10 Mugen wheels. And these are the most classic wheels for Honda cars. They're sought after, they're gonna sell out instantly, but they're 18 9.5s and they're designed specifically for this car. So if you're looking for that wheel, you've been waiting for that ideal wheel for this car, that is it. So you probably wanna pre-order those and get a couple extra sets or extra wheels just in case you bend one. 18s are, at least to me, in a track setup are the most desirable wheel size because the tires are both cheaper and you have more available options. And I think even as a street car, it would make more sense on this. 20s are huge on it. It may look good, but you know, most of the owners that complain on the OEM wheels, they're easy to bend and the ride quality suffers greatly. Speaking of which, what do they do here in terms of suspension, Jack, or any other parts underneath? So let's specifically talk about what they've done. So in the development process, as Scott has, may have alluded to in our video already, Mugen approached several different manufacturers of suspension. And Saks was one of them. Yes. And they were trying to figure out a relatively affordable way to improve both performance and find a good balance between ride quality. And because, the, at least in their words, the adaptive dampers found on this vehicle are so competent, they couldn't find a cost-effective means to strike a good balance between performance and, you know, being able, to, yeah, yeah. And being able to afford it. So what they did instead is they went with the Swift Springs, which lowered this car by 30 millimeters and dramatically increased the spring rate. From a ride quality standpoint, it is... It's a mixed bag, let's yeah. just be honest. You're taking Swift R progressively while in springs and while on the track, we'll talk about what it does there, but on the street, because you're working with the OEM valving, the shocks have not been retuned electronically. So as you go up the tier from comfort, sport to R, you know, you're, you're changing the valving of the shocks based on what they approximate from the stock springs. So now you're cutting the damper stroke down by 30 millimeters, which is not a good thing. No. And especially in comfort mode, it, it makes comfort mode completely unusable. What it does is it's always it on rebound. It bottoms out the shocks, yeah, It's basically. always on rebound and it, you, you lose that. So you have to keep it in sport. And sport is far rougher. And then when you get into R, it feels way more controlled because I think the, the damper programming works but more. But honestly, it's too stiff for the right. 
right. street. Right. And we're again, I think we'll talk about the nuances of what that does on the track, but on the street, I would say don't do it. I don't think it's worth it if all you're doing is street driving unless you have to have that. Unless you're making look. this a dedicated track car and you are cost. I, I, I would say yeah. even if you're doing a dedicated track car, I wouldn't do the springs. Okay. I'll be honest. I would just go for a pure coilover. I would ditch the electronic control of the dampers, but you're going to be paying a ton of money. So that's what they looked at. What can we do that gives you a little bit edge on the track? It gives you the look and, you know. That's where it is. Where it is. Yep. Because they've increased the spring rate in the rear so much, it actually reduces the mechanical grip in the rear of this car. But the byproduct of that is it allows it to rotate. And something that Mugen talked about is, you know, in the past, typically the way you get front wheel drive cars to rotate is you put a massive rear sway bar on them. Typically what they found, and this is a company that has done a lot of racing, it doesn't respond that well to it, so they rather work with the springs instead. The last thing to talk about in this car, Mark, and the most noticeable thing, is the tuning that King Motorsports did. Yeah, and I think this is a big thing. And we're gonna put the dyno plot up, and I don't want you to focus so much on the numbers because everybody gets hung up on the numbers, the torque and the horsepower figure. You can, anybody, any overnight tuner can send you one from Japan through email to give you this high horsepower number that's repeatable maybe like twice on a dyno. But this car is tricky to tune. It's a speed density tune that they do. And because the NOx sensor is so finicky, uh, it's hard to tune this. So what they did is a combination. They don't they don't believe in e-tunes. They want to get the car there, working on the dyno, get it on the street and back to back and really figure out how to do that. And the result is it may not have the biggest, most impressive numbers. And the numbers are still good. But when you look at the plot, that's where you notice it. And when you take it out off the bench and you put it on the street and the track, consistent power delivery no weird issues with hesitation, pulling timing, any jerking, daily drivability at the low RPM is good, any gear, even uphill, downhill, there's no strangeness. It feels like an OEM tune and this takes a lot of work and they did a great job with this. So again, if you're looking to have that reliable tuning that is going to give you a boost of performance across the board, this is this is what I would do to my own car because I, I'm aligned with their mentality. I want something that's more real, like from the factory, no BS. I don't want to have to be Peak like numbers that you can make it <laughs> like very right. specific uh, RPM are basically pointless to me, at least. So with our motorsports background, we've been exposed to and have tuned many different engine combinations and different many in many different chassis with this particular car, the Civic Type R. Um, being a turbo car, Honda de has designed a safety net into this car knowing that at some point someone may get a bad tank of gas or maybe put the wrong octane gas in it. So their timing curves, their fuel curves are a bit on the conservative side. Uh, when we take this car and we tune it, we narrow that band a little bit knowing that most of the enthusiasts that are going to get a tune are going to make sure that they have the right gas in the car so we can be more aggressive with the timing curves, we can be more aggressive with the fuel curves. We can give this car a much better overall driving response, better throttle response. We don't always focus on a peak number because peak number tunes don't always drive great. Um, and the, the majority of these cars are being driven on the street and they're not driven on the racetrack. Yes, there are many cars that are driven on the racetrack, but again, for the average guy driving the car around, you don't want a peaky tune. You want a, a tune that has nice drivability, good throttle response, uh, that doesn't have hiccups, doesn't throw the car into in limp home mode, um, and just acts like an OEM tune, but just much, much more refined. Last but not least is the titanium exhaust jack, and this is a expensive piece. Yes, a very expensive piece. I believe it's around $5,000. It is entirely titanium, including the hangers. So the main thing is you shave about like 19 or 20 pounds off. In total, this car, when compared to stock, is shaving off about 100-ish pounds, which is... It's a significant it's a significant. Like Let's take this out at Autobahn Country Club, Jack, and see what it's like to drive as a putter and also a little bit harder. All right. Bond Country Club Jack with the King Motorsports modified Mugen Civic Type R and I will say one thing 
We are going to take the first part of this drive leisurely. We're going to talk about what this is like to live with on the street, and then we're going to hop over to the other track where I'm going to go balls to the wall. But you, first, you and I've already done 200 miles on this car, Mark. So we do have a good idea of what this thing is like and we're on the street. Do 200 miles more. Let's start with how it gets off the line. And I'm sorry ahead of time. I've never launched this car before. <laughs> and the uh, week. It is noticeably faster than the regular LE Type R and the Type R. So let's talk about the street stuff, Jack. You put on a titanium exhaust and the side effect is it's pretty quiet except on the highway at 3000 RPMs where there is a pronounced drone that mommy and daddy are not going to like <laughs> when when you're taking them to the nursing home. It's not the worst I've heard, and I, King will be the first one to tell you this. Pretty much every exhaust you can put on the CTR either won't make power or will sound like total trash. At least this one was well, manu well manufactured, is quieter than most, and is actually relatively quietish. It and is. Light, for, yeah. for an aftermarket exhaust, this is what you expect from this brand is refinement. And it mostly is until you get into the highway conditions where you're at. Again, that's yeah, 3,000 3, RPM, RPM and just sitting on the highway for long periods of time. The engine tuning though, when you're on the highway, it doesn't we do weird herky jerky nope. shit. It feels like a factory tuned car. And that is a testament to how well King tunes cars. Yes, and that's what they're they're known for. They've been in the game for a long time, and if you're looking for a car to keep it long term and you just want a little bit more, that's what this tune brings you. And the first thing I noticed driving this is the power is better where you where you need it on the highway. So typically in sixth, you'd be downloading to fifth or fourth. Uh, Oftentimes, I don't even need to come out of sixth, and there's just the right amount of power to kind of get you going. Same thing with fourth and fifth. It, it gives you the power in the, the highway cruising gears, so it's, it's a far more relaxed drive because you have the power more for like the accessibility level on the street. But when you really wind the piss out of it, as you're gonna see on the track, that's where you notice it the most. Before we get onto the fast drive, Jack, I think we've covered everything. We covered the exterior, the interior space, the damping, the engine tuning, which we'll get into more detail here, the shifter, and I think that's about it, Jack. So let's head out there and see what it is like to drive this flat out. All right. So we're gonna pass these Miatas, Jack. They make me sick. <laughs> so we're in the Mugen Type R, tuned by King Motorsports here on the North Circuit in a C session at Autobahn Country Club. And the first thing I want you to notice, and I already talked about it a little bit on the uh, our street drive, is the engine tuning. Oh, it's way more peaky. So you can tell there's a lot more power at the upper end. And the regular Type R, it's not it's not tuned like an Eco Turbo. It will pull all the way to the red line. It's not the all power at the bottom end. So it's more fun to drive. You can tell they tried to make it more naturally aspirated. The second thing that you notice is this just has way more of it than the regular stock car. So I would say this just leaves the other car in the dust. <laughs> but as we know from talking to King, they tune this up more, way more on the conservative side. So they're not concerned about peak power or the, the horsepower number. They just want this car to have consistent power as you continue lapping it. So consistent timing, consistent boost. It feels somewhat factory in the way it delivers power. There's just a lot more and it feels more excitable. The next thing, which is definitely very noticeable, is how much more willing this car is to rotate off throttle. Oh yeah, I mean, this thing, if you just decide you're gonna come into a corner, um, stand on the throttle, and that just all of a sudden lift, it's looping itself. It's it's literally rotating itself around, which reminds me a lot more of like the older Honda front wheel drive cars. 
you had to be careful on how you did throttle and throttle lift this is the same way but the benefit of having that throttle lift oversteer if you know how to manage it you start washing out in a corner all you have to do is kind of pull the throttle up and the car points in so it, it makes it a lot more fun to drive this it feels less safe than the stock car and i know that's what they were going for well you also have far more power and the speeds you're achieving on the straights and on corner exit are much much higher than they are in the, the factory car and again this is on the same tire too if i remember correctly this is on a pilot sport cup too it is a cup too same thing with the le so grip levels i mean they're similar, but it's just, just that subtle change in spring rates makes this a lot more lively, at least on the track. Where it's a detractor, obviously, is you pay for it on the street. Yeah, which the we right talked car. about in our street drive. This but is a far more bumpy car. It's more unsettled. You feel it in the braking zone. It's a little bit more darty, too. And some of that might be just the fact that the shocks are a little bit overwhelmed there's there's not enough rebound there at the extreme edge of braking um it just doesn't feel like there's enough damping there but it's so subtle i mean and again you're not if you're really serious about tracking this you're not just going to do springs you're going to wind up doing coils but i think this is as best as you could probably do with a, a stock shock yeah and it does spring. really i think transform the way this car feels to drive you do pay for it in certain aspects of it but i think the dynamic improvements on this car are are very very noticeable and i know north is not the fastest track i feel like i do notice a little more squat from the rear but i can't really tell because we're not hitting high enough speeds like you would at say road america to really feel the aero advantage of the movement as well. Oh yeah, I, I don't I don't notice that at all. And this is a club track. This, it's perfectly suited for a car like this. The one question I had getting out of the LE, what would the extra power and torque do to this? Would it overwhelm the front end? I would say on these tires, aside from my little concerns about damping, it ha absolutely has had no effect. I can go foot to the floor, out of the corners. I'm not feeling torque steer. I'm not feeling the front end. Uh, washing out it's it's perfectly suited or at least the king motorsports tune is perfectly suited for this car I, i'm way more impressed with this car now that i've driven it out here i mean on the street personally you could forget having um you could forget having these springs on the street i couldn't live with it but out here i would love to drive this all the time and i think they've done a good job understanding where and what to do performance wise just the subtle improvements and it works you're sweating so much. The sweat came off your helmet and landed on my arm. <laughs> ah, you get it coming, dude. So since we've been around for a long time now, since 1981, we've seen so many different generations of the Honda. We've seen it evolve. We've seen it devolve. We've seen it change. We've seen it grow. The car behind me is another step. It's different. Um, if you take this car and put it on the track compared to an old Type R, it'll, it'll blow it away. And it'll do it all day long on the same set of brake pads, on the same set of rotors. It's different because it's not as sensitive as the old car, but it, the performance envelope is vast. It's also a car that's super accessible to everybody, which the original Type Rs weren't because there were so few of them. Right now, you can buy one of these cars, you can buy a used one, bolt on all the same parts and have essentially the same car. Um, whereas an original Type R now is getting to be pretty out of hand on some of their pricing. This may be the end of the line for this car, and the next ones may be electric. And at that point, we're all going to be looking back on this car and going, what a wonderful car that was, and what a, what a wonderful time that was to be driving it.